with the Hinsdale Wave Research Laboratory on the campus of Oregon State University. Behind us, a tsunami wave basin measuring 87 feet wide, 160 feet long, and seven feet deep. It's capable of producing a tsunami wave two and a half feet tall, which in scale would replicate a 25 foot wave. Welcome to Comcast Newsmakers, everybody. I'm Ken Ackerman. This tsunami basin is also a tremendous asset for advancing wave energy devices. And to tell us more about that, we welcome to Comcast Newsmakers, Annette Von Jouan. She is a professor of electrical engineering here. And you understand this stuff so much better than I do. I had all these elementary questions and uh, you seem eager to, to try to explain it to me. Please, in layman's terms, tell me what wave energy is. Absolutely. When we're talking about wave energy, we're talking about harnessing the energy in those heaving ocean swells and converting that into electrical energy. Harnessing it with, with a large buoy that goes back and forth, is that? There are several wave energy buoy technologies that are currently being developed without a real superior solution yet established, but that's why we need the research and development to really optimize those designs. So instead of going out in the ocean with a full scale model, this is where it would be tested or maybe on the other side. Absolutely, that is the desired path for a developer, is to move from small scale to larger to full scale devices. Now I mentioned this uh, wave basin here. Tell me about the flume on the other side and how that can help you with wave energy. Sure, the large wave flume is deeper. It's about 12 feet deep. And so we're able to test larger devices. And for example, last winter, we worked with a company called Columbia Power Technologies, where we tested a 1 15th scale device there in that large wave flume. And when we talk about 1 15th scale, it means that those waves are about 1 15th the magnitude of a full scale wave. Whereas here in the tsunami wave basin, we have tested uh, for example, 1 33rd scale mm -hmm. devices and even an array, five 1 33rd scale devices. And that also with, was with a company, Columbia Power Technologies. Right now, wind energy is, is becoming large in Oregon. Compare that to what the early indications are of uh, sending power to a grid from wave energy. Very good. You know, we're really tracking the wind development and, and where we are with wave energy is, is where wind was about 20 years ago with several devices uh, in, in the play and, and now we see that wind has really focused and, and optimized to a three blade horizontal axis turbine and that's where we need to go with, with wave energy. And so what we see is that with lessons learned, we really look to accelerate that, that process, get devices out in the water, but also do the really critical research on answering those environmental questions and social questions as well. You know, with half of the world's population located within 50 miles of a coastline, wave energy could be essential in, uh, in crucial energy for the future. Absolutely, it's a tremendous benefit with wave energy is that that wave power would be generated close to the demand. And there are some other advantages as well when you look at wave energy. Uh, when you look at energy density, the density of water is about 832 times greater than the density of air. And that means we have an opportunity to extract more power from a smaller volume, which means smaller costs, as well as lower visual impact. All right, so for the future, do you foresee uh, parks of buoys uh, strewn together with, with a cable going to a, a power grid somewhere? Well, abs th that's what we're looking at, but we wanna do this in a responsible way. So we have been looking at wave installations that would be perhaps 100 megawatt each, and you know perhaps um, up to seven uh, you know, up, the, up the Oregon coast, but essential is that collaboration with the Oregon communities. And fortunately, a tremendous team has formed uh, along the coast, including the, the Newport team, the fishermen involved in natural energy, which really helps us to look at de deploying these devices in areas that would be low impact for their industry. All right, Annette Von Juan, thank you very much for being here on a quiet day. I know there are people from all over the world that use this basin, so thank you very much. Thank you for being here as well on Comcast Newsmakers. Make it a great day, everyone.